Today I'm going to show you how to make a savory Japanese egg custard that you can customize with whatever you have on hand. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out. Chawanmushi literally means tea bowl steamed in Japanese. And it's a savory egg custard that can be loaded with veggies, mushrooms, and seafood. Chawanmushi was originally served as a substitute for soup. So it's got a high ratio of dashi to egg. This gives it a silky smooth texture that just kind of melts in your mouth into a pool of savory dashi. Today I'm going to be making mine with shrimp, scallops, edamame, and shiitake mushrooms. But as long as you have the ingredients for the egg custard, you can make it with any combination of mix-ins. Let's start off by checking out our ingredients. Chawan mushi is traditionally made with dashi stock. I'll include a link to my recipe in the description below. But if you don't have dashi, any flavorful broth like chicken or mushroom stock will work. For the custard, we're using a cup and a half of dashi, along with half a cup of egg, which is about two eggs, and a quarter teaspoon of salt to season it. For the mix-ins, I have 50 grams of scallops, 50 grams of shrimp, 10 grams of edamame, and 30 grams of shiitake mushrooms. Finally, I'm gonna get a little fancy today and top this off with some ikura, mitsuba leaves, and steamed shrimp. But this is totally optional, and you can use any colorful ingredients to top off your chawanmushi. Let's start off by measuring out our eggs. You want a 3 to 1 ratio of dashi to eggs, so this recipe is super easy to scale. My goal is to get about half a cup of eggs here, and two large eggs should do it. Next, you want to beat the eggs until they're uniform in color. The tricky part here is that you want to do this without creating many air bubbles, which can ruin the texture of the custard. In my experience, a side-to-side -side motion, as opposed to a circular whipping motion, integrates the least amount of air. Chopsticks held vertically work great for this, but if you don't have them, a fork will work as well. Alright, now let's add the dashi. And the salt. Then you want to mix everything together again, trying to incorporate as little air as possible. Inevitably, you're going to get some bubbles, and you can let the mixture rest for a while, which will cause most of them to burst. Or, if you're in a rush, you can use a fine mesh skimmer like this to scoop off the foam. Now I'm going to strain the mixture through a fine mesh sieve like this tea strainer. This will remove any remaining chunks of albumin or caleza from the egg. Be sure to do this slowly with the strainer as close to the bowl as possible to prevent new bubbles from forming. For the mix-ins, I'm going to start by cleaning my shiitake mushrooms with a damp paper towel. Then I'm just going to slice them up. For the scallops, you can add them whole, but these are kind of huge, so I'm going to slice them in half. For the shrimp, I have a detailed tutorial on shelling and deveining them without slicing them open in my shrimp and grits video, so go check the link in the description below. Now let's assemble the chawanmushi. I'm using three cups with lids, but any heat safe ceramic cups or ramekins will work. First, I'm going to add the mix-ins. You want to add the dense stuff like the edamame scallops and shrimp first, and the less dense ingredients like the shiitake mushrooms last. That's because ingredients like the mushrooms are going to want to float, while the dense ones are going to want to sink. 
Once you've got the mixins in the cups, you want to divide the egg mixture evenly between them. Be sure to pour this slowly from a container with a spout, or you're gonna end up making air bubbles. I got a little impatient and poured the two on the left too quickly. If I were to steam these without popping the bubbles first, I'd end up with little blemishes in the custard where the bubbles were. You can use a dry toothpick to pop the bubbles, or just let the mixture rest until the bubbles disappear. I don't want to bore you by making you watch me pop all of these, so let's move on. Once you're satisfied with the way your chawanmushi looks, cover them up with a lid or pieces of aluminum foil. This keeps condensation from falling into your cups from the lid of the pot. To steam these, you want to use a pot that's tall enough to fit the cups. I've added about a half inch of water to it, and I'm going to cover this and bring it to a boil. Now you'll want to add a dish towel to the water. This keeps the cups off the bottom of the pan, and it also prevents them from rattling while we steam them. Then you can place the covered cups on the towel. It's fine if the bottoms of the containers are submerged in the water, but if you notice they try to float, go ahead and remove some of the water. Then we're going to cover this with a lid and let it steam over low heat until the custard sets. For these cups, it takes about 20 minutes, but the size and thickness of your containers could change the amount of time needed, so you want to keep a close eye on them. You can test for doneness with an instant read thermometer. Anything above 160 degrees Fahrenheit and you're good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and get these out of the pan. That's steaming hot and it smells amazing. It's a little visually uninteresting though, so I'm gonna garnish this with some Mitsuba leaves, along with a piece of steamed shrimp, and a big old dollop of Ikura. Once you get the toppings on, you'll want to serve it immediately, but I like to cover them back up to keep them warm. Just be sure to warn your diners that the ramekins are hot. All you really need to make chawanmushi is soup stock and eggs, and yet it makes for a super impressive appetizer that seems a lot fancier than it is. As you can see, the shrimp and scallops have released even more flavor into this one. And the egg is so soft, it literally dissolves into a pool of flavor when it hits your mouth. Chawan mushi isn't nearly as hard to make as it looks. And you can fill it with whatever you have on hand. So I hope you'll give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, let me know you want to see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all your friends that love Japanese food. As always, I want to thank my amazing patrons for helping to fund this video. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link up here to join the No Recipes crew and help support our future videos. Well, I think that chawanmushi is cooled enough to eat, so I'll catch you in the next one.